And thanks for joining us, Dusty Sonnenberg, field leader with the Ohio Agnet and Ohio's Country Journal. We are wrapping up the Ohio Crop Tour for 2025, an outstanding two days with a lot of great tour uh, spectators, if you will, and a lot of great tour participants, both in terms of the farmers that let us visit their fields and the crop scouting teams that we had, one going north and one going south. Two different teams. We're going to let everybody go around, introduce themselves, talk a little bit about some of the surprises maybe that they had on this tour and some of the insights when we came to actually looking at what the yield might be. Should mention the Ohio Crop Tour is sponsored by the Ohio Field Leader Program. That's a project of the Ohio Soybean Council and your soybean checkoff. We're going to start with the north leg and then go on to the south leg of the tour. Uh, real quick, so everybody's aware, on the north leg, we did two days. The first day we hit, uh, let's see, we started in Morrow County, we hit Crawford, Wyandotte, ended up over in Hardin County, and then caught Delaware County. And on day two, we started in Marion County, jumped up to Seneca County, hit Hancock County, Henry and Defiance Counties, Putnam County, Allen County, and finished in Logan County. So with that, I'm going to pass the mic on, let you meet our tour scouts and uh, some of their insights. Scott Chaff, and I'm from Sandusky County. Uh, we started, uh, as Dusty said, going north through uh, Delaware County in that area. One thing I noticed is that a lot of the beans were very consistent, uh, no matter when they were planted, in terms of height, in terms of what looked like to be the yield potential. And again, yield potential is going to be critical because some of these later beans, which a lot of them were planted in late May, early June, uh, is going to depend on what happens weather-wise from here moving forward. It's going to take some rain. It's going to take some nice weather to get that yield. But the potential is definitely there. The shocking thing for me was the fact that uh, I saw a lot of water hemp, a lot more than I had anticipated. I had been hearing about it for years, but to see it up close, there's a bunch of it out there. It's going to be a real issue for us moving forward. So we're going to have to be diligent in what we're doing moving forward. Thanks. Sam Kenny, Logan County. I looked at the bulk of the corn in the north. It was really nice to see, not much disease, not much um, pollination issues, and just a lot of really nice stands. Doug Dirk, ID, Wood County. I also mainly looked at the corn. Um, pretty clean fields, not much disease, not much tar spot. Um, overall, I think we're going to have a pretty good yield if, if we continue to get the rains and weather here the next two months. So um, did see a little tassel wrap, which did affect some some pollination, but all in all, things look pretty good. Yes, hello, I'm Dave Conrad. I'm from Lorraine County. So, and I appreciate this, these two days. Um, what, what I noticed was the consistency from one end to the other. They, there's a lot of potential there. Um, there's very little, if any, uh, disease and insect issue out there. The biggest thing is our planting dates and even, even to the later planted ones, there's a ton of potential. If Mother Nature treats us right, we can get in, we can get those August rains, early September rains, but they really look good and it was impressive to me to see all that. Rob Bumbauer from Oglays County. Uh, I did mainly the soybeans in the north. Uh, again, I'm kind of going to follow right with uh, Scott and Dave. They both, uh, very little disease pressure, a uh, few bug feeding. Uh, we've seen a little bit of frog eye, but uh, nothing major. So I guess I just want to thank everybody for having me along there and I really enjoyed it. So yeah, Greg Labarge, uh, field agronomist with Ohio State University Extension. On the South Lake, I guess what we saw was uh, when we looked at corn populations, maybe just a little bit off. We were 29, 30,000 in most fields. Um, that may impact us from a yield standpoint that others will talk about here in just a minute. Um, one thing we did witness was certainly the water that um, resulted in the southern part of the state, uh, heavy rainfalls that happened just over the past couple of weeks, uh, flooding here late in the season, and uh, certainly is going to have an impact on some soybean fields that we saw. So um, this water that we have, uh, we're going to have to evaluate it, that over time and think about what conservation practices or CREP and other programs might be appropriate for some of those areas where we have frequent flooding. Hi, I'm Brianna Smith. I'm the editor of Ohio's Country Journal, and I'm from Richland County. Today, I served kind of as the photographer and recorder for the South Leg. So I got to learn a lot today from my team, um, both outside of the van and inside the van, and just got to see some of those different um, diseases that we're looking out for. But honestly, um, we didn't see a ton of that today. So uh, but really enjoyed the last two days, and it was my great, great job for our first crop tour. So really enjoyed it.
Joe McCandlish, Fairfield County. Boy, what a tale of two sides of the coin this year. Last year, going from a heavy drought situation in southern Ohio and even the state of Ohio to over excess amount of rainfall this year. It's really a unique, unique patterns that we've seen out there. It's pretty consistent and qu quality of corn crop and bean crop. You know, I've previously touched on this morning that if everything looks good going 50 mile an hour down the road, but as soon as you get in, it kind of tells a different story there. You know, I really consider on going in through and checking beans, checking corn continuous throughout the next month. There's going to be a rapid amount of change, I think potentially, depending on the weather you continue to get throughout here the next month or two. Uh, really the consistency throughout the corn and beans on the quality, how clean they were this year is really surprising. As warm and as wet as we've been, they've really been kind of in a greenhouse effect this year. It's been really, really, really good growing season. Doesn't matter on the bean side, how many population, are, uh, you know, the width of the rows that you were kind of at, we've really seen some good quality beans out there. And same thing with corn, you know, variance in population and, and your stand will be kind of a continuing thing that we look at. But overall, a really great couple of days. Brett Barton, Adams County, um, was on the south leg this year, um, toured around. Big thing I seen was the soybeans were real consistent. All of them were in that 36 to 40 plus inches tall. Um, nodes about two inches apart four pods per node um something else i would say that you know we was in champaign clark county today i definitely seen the if those guys don't continue to get some rains on that gravel that the corn might struggle um probably the soybeans too but more in the corn um the later planted corn blister stage um if they don't get proper amount of moisture um we're gonna be a lot of tip back in that and uh, they're gonna suffer a little bit so here's dusty and thanks, Brett. And thanks to our entire team, all the scouts that went out uh, two days and two nights of a lot of work. And as you can tell, they definitely put the attention into it to get the best information. You can find that information on our website. That's ohioagnat.com or ocj.com. You can read through the last two days from both the North team and the South team, what they saw out in the fields, different observations. Of course, check out our social media posts on Facebook and other social media. And we'll also have a podcast coming up in the next week or so you can listen to for a little bit more in-depth analysis of everything you've seen. Again, we want to thank the Ohio Soybean Council and your soybean checkoff dollars for making all this possible. For Joel Panorwood, for Brianna Smith, and for all of our scouts, I want to thank you. Have a great day. Music